Hello, friends, it's Kat from Yum Meow Kapow. Now, I know none of y'all are out there chomping at the bit for this info, and please feel free to directly disagree with that statement, but gosh darn it, I got a problem and I want to share it. I love clutch pencils. Yes, this is the review and instructional video that nobody knew to ask for, and you're totally welcome. I'm making sure you're enlightened against your will. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. So, what's a clutch pencil? It's basically a mechanical pencil, but with a broad stick of lead inside that doesn't break every four seconds. And you can get leads for it in a huge variety of hardnesses, softnesses, and colors. Mostly, the different hardnesses and softnesses are the key points, but it's also really great to be able to get a pack of photo blue lead easily. Because the 2mm stick of lead inside of most clutch pencils is robust enough to be used with hard pressure, broad strokes, and fine, delicate movements, they're great for shading as well as sketching. It's kind of like having the convenience of a mechanical pencil, but the versatility and durability of a wooden one. Just like a regular mechanical pencil, you push the butt end of the pencil to get the lead to pop out, and some of them click, click, click in measured amounts just like you may be used to, while others open up their mouths and let the lead slide smoothly through to whatever length you adjust it to. But a lot of people seem to be confused about how even to use these if they're ever in front of one. The question of sharpening the lead once it's dull, for instance, seems to come up in almost every video I've seen where someone gets one of these in a subscription box and isn't sure about its functionality. So let's start with that right off the bat. A lot, but not all, clutch pencils actually have built-in sharpeners right on their backsides. For instance, if you see a pencil that has a hole in the back end, that usually means it's actually a sharpener. For some of them, you can either pull or unscrew the back portion and use it like a traditional pencil sharpener directly onto the exposed lead, twisting until it gets to your preferred point. Some of them can't be removed, so maybe that means you'll have to take out the whole stick of lead and bring it to the sharpening booty, but that's still not really a hardship. Others might not have a hole in the end, but the back may unscrew to have a secret sharpening blade section on the inside, so you just twist that little bugger off, then use it to get your point pointy. Also, a mistake I make all the time is forgetting to drop down some of the lead out of the barrel of the pencil before I remove the back, meaning the lead is trapped inside the pencil until I put the back on again, press it, let out some lead, and then grab the sharpener again. Oops. A large reason that I forget to do that is because I've been spoiled by having separate sharpeners. My favorite and most reliable clutch products come from Stedler, and they offer this swell spin sharpener thingy that has a basin to collect the shavings, a little cotton puff to dust off any debris from the point itself, and offers two different sharpness template holes. You can either get crazy needle point thin sharpness, or very pointy but won't be like a razor so can still get fine details but also work in broader strokes sharpness. All you need to do is choose which one you want your pencil to be, drop the lead of your pencil into that hole until it reaches the bottom, then hold the back clicky part of the pencil until the base of the whole thing meets the opening of the sharpness selection hole. It'll mean that your lead is set at the proper length for whatever sharpness you want, then you stick it in what I'm going to call the mouth of the sharpener and spin it around until it's ready to go. Easy peasy. If you buy additional packages of lead because you either need more sticks or because you want different hardnesses or colors, there's sometimes a secret compartment that houses an extra booty hole sharpener in it too. Not all brands do that, and some either come with a tiny adorable razor blade sharpener or nothing at all, but that's another way to get them good and ready without having to mess with the back end of the pencil you're using. I've built up a sort of weird collection of clutch pencils over the years, and my favorite for price, reliability, and availability is Stedler. I made the mistake of trying to get a few super, super, super inexpensive ones from ATI so I'd be able to have ones that could come with me and I wouldn't worry about them getting destroyed. I'm not a fan of them. The pencils themselves are really light and feel cheap, which I suppose is expected given that they are, but I didn't realize that having at least a small amount of heft in my drawing materials was part of the experience. The lead that comes with ATI pencils and is available for purchase through them is also weird. It just doesn't feel right. Sometimes it'll be scratchy and rough, other times it'll be like the lead itself is too compressed and won't write well, and it usually also loses its point super quickly and kind of flattens out into a blob. Sometimes it'll skip weirdly, which is not a thing pencils ever do, and it won't always be reliable for shading as a result. Of course, when I tried to demonstrate that for this video, it pretty much refused to act up, and I suppose performs when someone else is watching is a decent enough quality to have in a pencil, but that means that anytime you want to use it, you either need to hire an actor to play observer, risk getting a stalker, or make a YouTube video. Realistically, none of that seems like a good long-term plan, so what I'm basically saying is stay away from these bad boys.
Oh, and that cool spinny sharpener I have? The ATI pencils don't fit in them because they're slightly thicker than the normal clutch body, so you've got to either use the booty sharpener or use their proprietary sharpener. Which is fine, but was inconvenient for me since those spinny guys are kind of standard. Still, if you replace the ATI lead with something more stable, they're an okay choice. I'm fully comfortable making them my sacrifice to the bottomless pit of whatever bag I'm carrying in case they disappear into the ether pencil, but I always go for the Stedler or Faber-Castell one when I'm at home. Faber-Castell doesn't have a booty though, so you would need an external sharpener if you didn't already have like 30. I started using clutch pencils in high school because my graphic design teacher put them on our materials list and I fell in love with them. Being able to control exactly the fineness of the point, not having to worry about my lead snapping if I let more than a tiny nub of it out, choosing between if I want to use 2H, HB, 6B, blue, pink, or whatever other kind of lead I want, it's a weird thing to be spoiled by. Every time I use a regular mechanical pencil nowadays, I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't feel as nice or work quite as well. Not to say that they aren't perfectly serviceable, but there's a difference between serviceable and nice. If you're looking to start out with clutch pencils, I'd recommend starting with Stedler. I put links down the doobly-doo for what I recommend, and the bare minimum is just the pencil itself. Given that it already has a built-in sharpener in the back, you don't need the spinny one, but gosh, if it isn't super convenient. And one stick of lead will last you a good long while, but it might be a good idea to get a package of your preferred hardness as well. It means you'll have plenty to work with for a long, long time, and you'll even have a bonus sharpener most likely. Are there any other people out there who love these things, or am I just a complete wackadoo who cares about something that nobody else does? Because I'm out here watching most people sharpening their reliable wooden pencils down to nubs, or snapping half of their mechanical pencil lead before drawing a line is done, and I just think, guys, there's a better way. And please, please tell me if you learned something from this, even if it's just that the darn things exist. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and pencil lead.